Hello and what's up guys, Medium Guy here and in this video we're going to deep dive in the Request Transformer plugin in Kong API Gateway. So on the previous video in this video series about Kong API Gateway, we saw the Response Transformer plugin. So basically this plugin kind of stands on the opposite side of that plugin. So if you haven't watched the previous videos, I recommend you give a visit where you can learn about other cool features that Kong API Gateway provides in its open source version. So without any delay, let's get down to work. So in a total overview over here, I've got a schematic that shows the Kong API Gateway standing between the client and the upstream servers, which are actually our backend services. So basically the request will be first received by the Kong API gateway, and then the request transformer plugin will actually try to make some changes to the request before actually proxying it to the upstream servers. So basically it can do things like adding headers, removing query strings or stuff like that, which we're going to see in details in a moment. So if I go to the official documentation page for the Kong API gateway on the request transformer plugin section. So again, it is stated over here that the request transformer plugin allows simple transformation of the request before they reach to the upstream servers. So actually don't mix this plugin with the request transformer advanced plugin, which is actually the advanced version of this plugin, which actually has a lot more features and it is only available on the paid version. So that's not what we're going to cover in this video. And next right over here, I'll go to the configuration reference section in which we can see all the available parameters that we can pass configuring this plugin. So basically we're going to actually deploy this plugin in a declarative mode and we'll actually use some of these parameters in order to demonstrate how this plugin works in action. So as always, we've got the name parameter which is a required field, which in this case we're going to set to the request transformer. And next over here, we've got the instance name, the service route consumer and consumer group, by which we can set the scale of this plugin. So basically it will be applied to one of the scales that we configure in the con configuration file. So if we do not set any of these fields, the plugin will actually be enabled globally and will be apply to all the services, routes and everything else. So we've got the enabled field which actually enables and disables this plugin. So it is by default set to true and we can set it to false in order to temporarily disable this plugin. And right over here we've got the config field which will actually use to change the data on the request that is received by the con gateway and will eventually be proxied to the upstream server. So we've got the HTTP method by which we can set the method of the request for this plugin to be applied to like for example we can set it to get, post, put or delete and next over here on the remove section we can actually remove some data from the request's body headers or the query strings and it is quite almost the same for the other configurations. So in order to give a test to this plugin and see in action how it works I'm going to actually switch to the VS code over here where I've got a docker compose file and a kong.yaml file in the kong directory in my github repository where I put all the files and configurations and you can find the link down in the description section. So as you can see over here I've got two services. One I have named the backend service which actually is an echo server and basically returns the detail of the request that it actually received. So basically this is a great example to see what data has been sent to the upstream server. And next right over here I've got the Kong service which uses the Kong official image with the latest tag and a volume mounted inside it which is the dot slash config directory to this exact directory over here and actually on the environment variable section I have set the database mode to off that's because I'm going to 
configure the Kong gateway using a configuration file. And right over here, by using this environment variable, I am actually defining the Kong.yaml, which is my configuration file in which we're actually going to configure our upstream servers and the plugins, which we'll see in a moment and some other environment variables that we're not worrying in this video. So on the port section, I've got a port, which is 8000, mapped to exactly the same inside the container. So basically it is the exact port that the Kong service will be up and running inside the container. And by mapping this port, I'll be actually able to make requests from my laptop to the Kong server inside the container. So next I'll move to the kong.yaml file. Right over here you can see that I've defined a service and I've set the name to the echo server and set the URL to the backend which is exactly the service name of the echo server that we have right over here. So basically because these two containers will be up and running using the same docker compose file they'll actually share the same docker network among each other and can actually call and see each other through their service names. So in your example, if you don't have your upstream server in the same Docker Compose file, you will actually have to change this value and set it to something like HTTP 10.10.10.100 and maybe on port 8080. So basically this service will be a proxy to this IP address on this very port over here. Or actually, if you have your upstream server exposed with a domain name, you can also set this value to the relevant domain name right over here. So I'm going to remove this because by defining backend on port 80, which actually I won't define, so the request will be proxied to the echo server that will be up and running alongside with this Kong gateway. So on the route section, I've defined a route and set the path to slash echo and which is exactly the same path that I'll use to make requests to this service. So finally, right over here on the plugin section, I've got only one plugin that I've set the name to the request-transformer. So by doing this, I'm actually enabling the request-transformer plugin. And actually, because I haven't set any service, consumer, or any route or anything else, this will actually be enabled globally and will be actually applied to anything that I define in my kong.yaml file. So right over here on the config section, I've configured two of the functions that this plugin actually can do. One, I've configured the remove and inside this, I've defined a header and a query string to be removed from the request that the client will make. And actually, if the request includes this header or this query string, the proxy request to the upstream server won't actually include these two fields. So on the other hand, with the add directive, I've tried to actually add a header and also a query string to the request. So despite the request of the client will not include this header or this query string, on the response of the echo server, we'll actually see that these two fields also are included in the request that is received by the upstream server. So if I hit save, I'm ready to actually spin up my Kong API gateway. So I'll move to the terminal and right over here, I'll hit ls to make sure I'm in the exact same directory that I've got my Docker compose file along with the config directory that holds the Kong.yaml file. So right over here, if I say docker compose op d to run this in detached mode, you can see that a network has been created along with two containers sharing the newly created network. So if I say docker compose ps, I should actually see my both containers with the state up and right over here I can see exactly the same ports that I've mapped to the Kong container. So by hitting docker compose logs dash f to follow the logs and dash dash tail 100 to grab the latest 100 lines of the container logs. So over here I can see things are looking normal and I should actually be able to make requests to this Kong instance. So I'll move to another terminal and right over here I'll try to paste a curl command that actually sets two headers. 
So actually one of the header names are exactly the same thing that I've configured in the con configuration file to remove this header before proxying the request to the echo server. Also on the query parameters section, I've got two query parameters, one exactly the same name. Again, I've configured in the con YAML file to remove that query string before proxying it to the upstream server. So if I hit enter, and I can see a JSON, which I'm going to actually copy and paste it over here on the VS code. And I'll actually try to format this so we can actually see the exact key value pairs. So right over here on the query section, you can see that a new query parameter has been added because we have set the exact same thing on the add section of the conk.yaml file and also we've got the other query parameter that we sent in the URL of the curl command. Also we can verify that the to remove query parameter has been removed from the request that is proxy to the upstream server. So actually these are the query parameters that are received by the echo server and we can see that it doesn't include the other query parameters that we configured in the Kong YAML file to remove before sending it to the upstream server. So exactly the same we can see in the headers section that we have the new header added to the headers also because we try to add it over here and also we have the header that we sent using the curl command but actually we do not have the x to remove header because again we set the remove configuration in the yaml file to remove the exact header with this exact name so that's all for this video i hope you learned something new in this one and if you have any questions any recommendations of course go ahead and ask me in the comment section down below also don't forget to watch the other videos in this video series dedicated to kong api gateway where you can learn about other features like rate limiting load balancing ip restrictions and things like that so if you like the content please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel which will greatly motivate me to create more free contents like this. So with that, that's all for this video and I hope to see you in the next videos.